where it came from and, and how. Um, you know, I, I uh, like a lot of writers that I know, um, am a secretly failed musician. <laughs> Um, uh, not, not, not really, but I, I think you know. I, I, I know um, most well, musicians are failed musicians. <laughs> <laughs> That's worth remembering. They're, they're, they're most of the icebergs. Right. I mean, failed musicians are the icebergs. Um, but uh, this is um, really a, a, a beautiful book, and I, you know, I think I saw you speculating elsewhere about about other um, musicians who've written good. Novels, and you know, I can I can think of a few, right? Len Leonard Cohen, who Leonard we were Cohen, just having a chat about Nick Cave. Nick Cave. Oh uh, well, Nick Cave's first novel, let's be honest, is awful. Which is the funny one? Oh, the the no no no. I have I actually have not read that one. And the ass. He wrote a book in the eighties called And the Ass Saw the Angel, which is a <laughs> that's it. That's his good one. <laughs> <laughs> Right. You don't want to read the second one. No, I, I don't. I don't. Nor you know. I, I don't think Morrissey makes the cut. Uh, alas. Um, <laughs> uh, but you know, John Darnell of Mountain Goats. Uh, I love his books. Yeah. And um, you know, the joy of reading your novel is that it's a really fantastic novel. Thank um, you. And uh, you know, a, a fantastic novel. That I feel like engages so many things. Um, beyond, you know, that, that are that are not music, um, although also music too. Mm. I mean, mm. I. I um, I think of it as, well, well, we'll get to the how I think of it and what I think it's about, but, you know, under what, what how, where, under what conditions did you start writing it? I think I read somewhere that you started writing it as short stories, or you were... Yeah, I, do, I, I kind of, I, I wrote a, a novel by mistake, really. I, I started... The only way to write one. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You, do, you, do, you don't want to take it on as a task. It was, I started writing short stories because... Uh, for a really simple reason, I, I started having weird ideas that I just didn't know what to do with. Uh -huh. So, you know, kind of um, Umbridge in the book, right. or, or the scene with the two uh, rockabillies who live in the 50s. Yeah. Started off as I would wake up with an idea in my head and think, what the fuck do I do with this? You know, um, what do you do with an idea like that? Um, so I started writing them down, and I, I found. I found that there was something pleasurable about doing that, about having to think about things kind of seriously and, and over a length of time. And then I had all these these stories, and I, I just got it into my head that they were in some way in the same kind of height, not the same physical, the same kind of psychic space. Yeah. Um, it's a terrible point. Ignore the fact that I said psychic space. <laughs> <laughs> they were in the kind of same kind of world. Um, so I started a, a truly terrible novel, which was kind of David Mitchell-esque of, of kind of interlinked short stories. Uh -huh. You know, he's here and he's there. Um, and it wasn't very good. Um, but it just meant I had a, a whole load of words on paper. Right. And then I was like, oh, you know, this is half a novel. Right. Uh, and then I went back and thought, right, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. Because I'm not going to about the structure and stuff like that. And one little strand of it was these two brothers, and one taking over the other's life. Um, this has always interested me. But, um, I started fitting stuff around it, and then I was kind of like, oh, this could be a book. You know, so I, I get it. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what startles me about it is that, you know, when you when I saw that you said that you had started the short stories, it's you know, immensely unified. It, it, oh, it no, I mean, my, yeah. most of them are gone. Yeah, you know okay. I mean, it, yeah. it's kind of like the original draft that I did, which was, it was so long. You know what I mean? It, it, it was kind of like, I'd cut it back to kind of 180,000 words. <laughs> and and it had... in the vicinity of probably, what, like 700 pages? Yeah, yeah, like Moby Dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it went off on all these kind of clever little tangents. Right. I cut it, and then my editor cut it, and publisher cut it, and Milkman cut it, you know. Right. Anyone who came in just said, oh, yes. Right. Um, and it probably still could do with a cut. Um, but, but all of that stuff that I started with is pretty much gone. I mentioned those two pieces just yeah. because they're left. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it was almost like you have to sneak up, or I had to sneak up on writing a novel, because it's just fucking terrible. It's just, it's, 
so, so long. <laughs> <laughs> I know it sounds silly, but it's just like a blank page and a novel next to each other. You're just like, there's no way of making this. Yeah, I mean, I think for anybody, I, I don't know if this is true when you're making music or whatever, but I know, I know that for any piece of art, you're always kind of writing away, you have to kind of write away from or around, or, you know, it's, it, it, there's, yeah, yeah. there's a kind of crippling effect to sort of sitting down and thinking, oh, this is the, you know, this is the thing. Well, I, I, th I think one of the, the really good things about having been in a band is there's always a point when you're making a record where you go, oh, this isn't work. Right. You know what I mean? You've, you've, you've got kind of eight songs and two of them aren't great. And you've written a load and you're suddenly like, oh, this isn't going to work. You know, we, we should give this up and become farmers. <laughs> and I've done it enough times that you know that you just you just have to plug away, you know, go back and cut and do all those things. And I think it really helped to have, have lived a life of, of kind of like, the success of something being made up of a thousand little fragments yeah. uh, and ju just knowing that okay it's not great it's not finished it's not right but that doesn't mean there's not something in there you know? right and you know when, when you when you mention that that feeling of a thousand little failures mm -hmm. i think i've also seen somewhere that you, you said somewhere that this book was also born out of a period where the, your, your band had gone on hiatus or you know, yeah. whatever it was and that, that it was really born out of you know for you a, a way of kind of interrogating the feeling of you know failure or questions yeah i mean w when the band split up i i you know we had no money and i i went and worked and i worked in offices and you know i attempt and i did all this and i was like 40 years old you yeah. know it's kind of like um it wasn't a lot of fun. Yeah. 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 Um, but it was it was fascinating in one way because 40, 50 of these kind of ages, it's most of the times when the, the possibility is open to you, they close down. Right. You suddenly kind of like, shit, I'm not going to be a professional athlete. Right. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> not that I ever was going to be. But you know, there's, there's a weird way it might happen. You know, I'm not going to be. You know, I'm not. I'm not going to be a CEO. Right. I had that weird, a gift, I suppose, of finding out what would have happened if I'd led a very different life. Sure. What would have happened if I, you know, got a job in an office right. and, and worked in, you know, insurance or something like that. Sure. Which, in a, in a weird way, is a gift. You know. I, I fucking hated it, but right. I got interested in the idea of can you become someone else at that late in life? Right. And what would you do to make it work? Yeah. Um, so, you know, the, like most debut novels, I think the characters are, are, are just parts of me. You know, that, I, I would say that's true, not just for debut novels. I wouldn't, I wouldn't sell yourself short. Uh, but, but there's yeah. people who can actually make people out. You know, it's, kind of, it's, it's hugely impressive. <laughs> With me, it's just kind of like take, take a bad quality of yourself, amplify it. A bit. And we'll, that <laughs> well, you're being you're being modest. I mean, you know what what I would and I agree. What strikes me <laughs> is that the book is for those of you who haven't had the good fortune. In fact, we yeah, should, we should really ask how, how many people have, have, have read it. Okay, Fantastic. so no spoilers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Nothing. No, it's, <laughs> but it's a very complicated book, I think, in some ways to, to yeah. quantify. Um, you know, it's, it's a book about uh, two brothers. Um, one of them, uh, just, um, you know, paraphrase, no, I'm paraphrase I'm you very poorly. Love to hear. One of whom is, you know, on some level, I, I guess you would call him a failed musician, right? Oh, no, no, he's definitely a yeah, failed musician. He's a failed musician, but he, he's just no quote marks. He, no. he has the affect, I think, of a, of a of one who at least would think, would yeah. imagine himself to be successful. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's kind of a, a, a huge prick. Um, yep. And then the other brother, his twin, who is quite opposite to that, who is a, a you know kind of an introverted and um, uh, well, we can say he spends his, his days with a, a model king of the world he's built in his flat on the thirtieth floor and kind of 
expenses, they've basically just thrown in that custodian. Right, right. And, and I feel, you know, and, and, and there is, and, and without the way, one of the brothers vanishes, and there's a... Yeah, I mean, this is all on the back. You yeah, say yeah, this. okay. <laughs> and, and, and there's an investigation that the, that the surviving brother has to undertake, um, which is a sort of classic noir setup. Um, yeah. For a, a book that has a, a lot, a lot more to offer, even than that. Much as I like a classic more and more set of, like everybody. Um, but you know, it, it strikes me that you know this book also, in the in the best possible sense, feels informed by you know not not by working in an insurance office, but but informed in that way that I think that you know a, a good novels, great novels tend to be. Um, which is by feelings of disappointment, failure, oh, yeah, totally. loss. You know, it's, yeah. I mean, uh, we, we were just talking before, I think my, very few people are, feel that they've hit their absolute potential. There's very few people who sit back and go, everything I wanted, it's all happened. You know what I mean? The life, the girl, the house, the career, all went right. Right. I, I would all, all lives. Yeah, are, uh, I, 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 I would. I would go so far as to say that. I, I mean, I don't know anybody. Even even for the people for whom those things all happen. Exactly. They don't happen. Exactly. Yeah. Right. You know, uh, we always look at at, at, at the life and the death of Greg, and that's that, uh, that's part of the book. The idea of, of kind of uh, if you'd taken the life and the death, and, and we all we all make weird choices. And someone said ages ago. It's a lovely quote. They said, um, my entire life is based on the, 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 the decisions of a, like a nine-year-old boy. Okay. Because at nine, I decided I was going to become like a pop star. Okay. But, but it's, it's really true for most of us, I think. You know, you, ma you make these decisions incredibly ill-informed based on books you've read or bands you've seen. And, and you're stuck with them kind of, you know, as, as a grown man, you know. <laughs> Um, and the book is a little about what would it be like if, if you've made a completely different decision. Right. W would you still be the same person you know, at your core? Would you? Right. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, the answer is yes. <laughs> um, um, you know, one, one of the other things that strikes me as really, I mean, there are so many kind of faces to this book that I would want to peel back. One of them is that, that struck me is that, you know, the book is set in 2010. Mm -hmm. um, and what's fascinating to me about that fact is that it's also a book that feels um, incredibly modern. Like, mo but mo by modern, I mean very, very digital. It's, it's, it's yeah. really, in many ways, a book about um, Kind of the, the digital and the analog and the, the uh, you know kind of um, de degradation or preservation of information. Right? There's a there's a kind of a extended riff about a lost Beach Boys record and other things. Um, and you know there are there are chapters that are um, yeah without giving too much away that are, that are uh, presented as um, you know as if they're YouTube comment threads or SoundCloud things or text. Um, not, not in a sort of tricksy formal way. I mean, I don't think that that's something that's insanely satisfying about the book is that I think like a lot of novels try to interpolate those forms and wind up sort of feeling like, oh, you're just. People, people, yeah. people in books always treat email and YouTube and things like that as, as if as if they don't use them. Right. That's what I find really strange. Right. Those things are embedded in the book because I spend a lot of my time on that. Deeply, you know, something more complicated than that. Deeply embedded, of course, we yeah. all do. But I mean, what I what I think is kind of amazing about it is that, you know, I, I was thinking, and this is kind of one of the book's great tricks of the life, is that it both participates fully in the ten years ago in which it is set, and yet, you know, ten years ago we weren't actually quite that. No, modern. no, no, totally. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I partly set it then because. Um, it, and it was very different in London. It, it, it set it set over a couple of weeks when volcanoes went off in Iceland, and all air travel was, was stopped in in Britain. And I was there at the time. I was working working on the 
the process with uh, a project with some uh, Los Angeles people who were all trapped there. And it was this weird time out of time. You know what I mean? Every, everyone kind of made something in those times. They couldn't travel, they couldn't do their meetings, they, could, they just had to sit there and kind of create stuff. And it, it was quite odd. And the combination of that, and it was also at the time of the banking crisis, both this sense of the world stopping making sense, these really big things in the world, you know, banks and uh, the news and everything suddenly just being kind of surreal. Yeah. Um, I wanted to set it in a time when it felt like it's kind of the end of things. Right. You know, I mean, one of the things about about the main character, the main kind of character, the musician guy, is he's he's the end of a kind of lineage of four guys with a guitar, post Beatles, right. rock music, right. which I think is probably gone. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and it's funny you were talking about the death of movies, and it, it's kind of like art forms die. Right, you know that's I mean? right. I think about this all the time. And yeah. we, we never think of it, you know what I mean? It's kind of like music hall at some point was cutting edge, fucking banging music. Right. You know what I mean? Opera at some point was, you know, what the kids would, were down with. Right. And it's what we listen to now and, and the kind of band that, that the main character wants to be, it'll go. You know. Right, right. And yet our attachment to those forms, I mean, believe me, I'm a novelist, I think about this yeah, all the damn yeah, time. Yeah. Um, Definition of pissing the wind, <laughs> <laughs> but it, that's but good. It, yeah. <laughs> but it, but it, it does. You know, the, the the fact is, is that in in kind of popular or commercial terms or kind of whatever the cutting edge is, right? I mean, it's like you know, movies, television. I mean, hell, you know, the cutting edge is video games, right? I mean, yeah. Right. Yeah. And and and, 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 and that unreported on, undiscussed. Right. They're just consumed. Right. Know, this is always really interesting. Right. But for all, for everybody here, I assume for all of us, these are still, you know, we still have, we, our feelings about books and about yeah. rock and I mean, roll, like, haven't changed, right? Th there's so going to be no one here who isn't a, a huge music fan. <laughs> or a book fan. Who right. 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 music fan. Right. So, yeah. And there is a certain joy in the, this book in particular in the way that it encodes that music fandom, for, at least for me, because I... I, well, I, wa I wanted to write a little bit about... Um, about about music without writing about lifestyle, that right? Makes sense. Right. So one of the things I've always hated about books about uh, musicians or rock stars or whatever is they're always about the lifestyle. Right. They're, it's always about kind of you know, getting on your private jet and drugs and you know girls and whatever. Um, and it's never about the boredom of that. Yeah. But it's also never about what it's like to make music and what right. it's like to, to be on stage. Right. Um, and I wanted to write a little bit, just a little bit about that. Right. You know, about about the way that, that music feels. I am going to read. I'm gonna yes. I'm going to read one tiny, tiny bit. Please do. Yeah. And the thing is, I didn't bring my glasses, so. I'm not going to read it. I won't, I won't have to read it later. Um, yeah, I wanted to write about the realities of, of making music, how, how it feels, you know, because because I hadn't really seen I hadn't really seen it done properly, right. you know what I mean? Not, not properly, no. No, it's and it's... that I think people attempt to do, and, and, and it's what I think what I was saying to you this morning when we were texting it was that, you know, you think particularly as the book kind of draws to its close, you really, you really get there. I, think. I, yeah. I mean, I hope so, because yeah. I've, I've spent my life making music, you know what I mean? It's, it's important to me, and listening to music is important to me. Right. I you mean, know. As, to, as, as to all of us, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. It, exactly, but it, yeah. it's, it's one of those weird things that we write about People write about love all the time, and hopefully, you know, there's yeah. this love story. In yeah. this. But love isn't always romantic love. You know, it, right. it is sometimes the love of 
the love of music or, right. the, or the love of art or, or any of those things. And, and one of the things about the main character, Brandon, is, as you said before, he's a dick. Right. I mean, th there's no getting around it. You wouldn't want him as your friend. But he, he's consumed but by music, by the yeah. idea of making something brand new. Right. And I'm always a little bit um, just in tune with people like that, however bad they are. Right. You know, it's kind of, uh, the one thing about him is he, he kind of gets stuff done. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? His brother's a much nicer person, but he doesn't do anything. Right. Although I think the book gains something from kind of oscillating between their perspectives. You know, if there's there's a, I think about this, you know, like when, when I wrote, my last novel, The Green Machine, which is everybody says, which is oh, fabulous, by the way. I'd recommend to everyone. Everybody says, oh, you know, it's such an LA book. And I think, you know, so much of that book is set in New York mm -hmm. or London. Like, you know, there was always that sense of, like, okay, I'm in LA, now I need to leave, you know, yeah, there was yeah. that sense of, like, needing, you know, needing to provide a contrast or, you know, and I think this book does that too, just as, you know, I mean, you know, Adam is about as far from the music, and so Adam is about as far from the musician as you can get yeah. in his temperament and in his concerns and I think you know the book kind of lands you know even where the book finally arrives without giving anything away feels you know a little beyond that well right? there's, there's a weird mathematics as well which is th this idea that and I think it's a really simple thing for some people one person loving them a hundred percent is is the goal of life you know what I mean I think most of us you know that's 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 a life well lived and for some people, a million people loving you a little bit is more important. Right. And it's it, it's literally almost a formula. That's the passage that I'm sitting here scanning the book for. There's a line where Brandon says something like, you know, if I could come back as anything, it would be as a piece of the as song a piece of music, heard yeah. from a heard from a passing car with a DJ talking on top of it. Right. Well, I, 